So the final uh, generator I'm going to talk about is uh, WAV, or the wave file playback uh, generator. So uh, this is used for playing back wave files, as you might be able to guess. And uh, the wave generator can handle both mono and stereo files at any sample rate. If a stereo wave file is loaded, it's first mixed to a mono equivalent before being loaded. The wave generator also handles 8 and 16-bit wave files, and you have approximately 7 me megabytes of memory available for loading samples. And uh, this translates to about 80 seconds of 44.1 kilohertz 16-bit mono audio. In general, I'd recommend taking all your samples and mixing them to mono before loading them into PSPC. That way, uh, it's, uh, you'll conserve some memory in, in the program. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger WAV at the first step by pushing, uh, pushing square to unmute the track. So this is just a drum loop that's loaded into uh, into lab zero. So in order to actually get to the synthesizer parameters, I'm going to push left trigger, right trigger, and triangle, and then select gen, and then we have a list of parameters for lab. So the first parameter in lab is file name, and this is the name of the file played by the generator. Uh, all wave files need to be placed in the dot uh, in the WAV subdirectory under PSPC. There's no way to browse uh, to other uh, wave files that are stored in other directories, and you shouldn't create any subdirectories under the wave uh, directory in PSPC. Uh, if you do that, then uh, the program will be able to find your audio files. Uh, also, your wave files uh, need to be uh, the, the file name themselves needs to be eight characters or less in length to be used in the wave generator. So uh, you scroll through uh, the, the visible and available files um, just like you would any other parameter by holding a triangle and then pushing up or down on the analog or digital pad. So these are all the uh, all the audio files that are available. And then when you actually find one that you want to load, uh, you push the uh, you push the X button. So scrolling through doesn't actually load the audio file, it just shows you the file name. So then to actually activate it, push X. So this is the amen 2wav file that's being played right now. So the next three uh, parameters control uh, how fast the wave file plays. So the first parameter is BPM sync. So if this is set to off, then the BPM step parameter is ignored completely. If it's set to on, then the wave generator uses the value of BPM steps to set the speed of the wave file is played back. What BPM steps lets you do is sync the speed of the wave file to the BPM of the song. And this is really useful, say if you have a drum loop, that you want to be synced perfectly with the uh, with BPM of the overall song. So what you would do is turn BPM on and then BPM steps the number of steps in the loop. And as long as the uh, read speed parameter is 1.0, the wave file plays back all the way through uh, the number uh, steps set by BPM steps. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on so you can hear that sound. Now, you can hear the loop is playing perfectly over 64 steps. So, and let's say I want to play over 32 steps, then what I would do is change BPM step to 32. So I'll bring this back to a 64. So read speed is also used to set the speed of playback. Uh, so if BPM uh, sync is off, read speed is the only parameter that controls the rate that the uh, that the wave file is played back at. And read speed can also be positive or negative. Uh, if uh, BPM sync is on, then read speed scales the overall speed set by the BPM step parameter. So uh, I'll turn uh, BPM sync off first. Now what I'll do is raise read speed.
I'll bring it down to a low value. And say I bring it to like negative one. Now you can hear that the uh, the wave file is actually playing back backwards. All right, so I'm going to set this back to 1.0. I'm close enough to one point out. Uh, okay, so uh, so the wave generator also has the ability to change its speed uh, using x mult end offset parameters, just like the other uh, pitch generators. So this allows you to do um, exponential uh, frequency changes or uh, speed changes that the uh, the wave files play back. So the next two parameters are start lock and end lock. And what these are used for is for setting the, the start location and location where a sample is played back from. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the start location to, uh, to uh, 0 0.5. So one very uh, useful feature in PSPC is that um, if you use a D-pad um, with the left and right trigger for setting start lock and end lock, uh, you get values that remain uh, perfectly in sync, assuming your loop is in 4-4 uh, four, four time. So, uh, if you use the D-pad plus the left trigger and push up and down on the, uh, the D-pad, then you change the value and start locking and lock by 1 over 5 or 2 plus. And if you use the right trigger with the D-pad up and down, then you change the value and start lock by 1 over 32. So that means that you can very easily get to um, values that are perfectly in sync with the, uh, the uh, with what you would want if you want to, say, cut up a, a drum loop for, uh, for drum bits. So I'm going to hold um, triangle and right trigger and push up on the D-pad. And so you see I pushed up four times and now I'm at uh, 0.125 or 1.8. Push up four more times. So now what's happening is that the drum loop is actually um, playing from uh, one quarter of the way in until the end of the loop. So then you can, you can change the end location the same way by holding a uh, triangle. So now it's just playing from a quarter of the way in until uh, uh, three quarters of the way in on the drum loop. So I'm going to turn BPM sync back on now. So you can see that because we're only playing half the loop, even though BPM steps to 64, uh, we're playing uh, we're only playing audio for the first 32 steps, plus 32 steps of silence. So if you want uh, the loop to play over and over again, you change the play type parameter from one shot. To uh, change it from one shot to loop. I'm going to change the read speed back to 1.0 exactly. So now you can hear that the loop is playing uh, perfectly, where it's playing uh, over twice in a row because we're only playing half the loop. The speed is set so that way. If you're expecting to play the whole loop in 64 steps, we're only playing half, so it plays in 32 steps, but we're looping it. So now, um, say I change this to 0.5. So now it's playing the same loop over four times in a row. The start lock or end lock minus start lock is 0.25. So I'm playing quarter loop. So then the last two parameters are warp and warp WT, and again these are used for applying a frequency warp to the sound.